Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. This video will have a very short introduction. In this one, I'll share with you guys the technique that I discovered with the laziest way you can make a chipping effect. Also, in this one, I'll continue the combat robot page. So, yeah, let's get to the video. Okay, so last week we've worked on the base and we've added lots and lots of details to it. We've added cables and some other structures and we really try to try to make it as detailed as possible to make And now it is time to paint this bad boy. So uh, let's begin by taking everything apart. So here's the base without any cables and without the central support arm. Uh, as you guys can see right here, there are lots and lots of wires and cables to this project. And I might even add more by the end of the painting process. But before I begin thinking about the colors for this project, I need to take care of something uh, right here in the front of the base. So you guys can see that this uh, thinner tube right here in the front, it is kind of flimsy and it kind of bends if you touch it. And to take care of that, I'll put these uh, aluminum bars that I have right here that fits perfectly inside the tube uh, to kind of make it more rigid. So I just position the aluminum bar inside of the tube and with the low viscosity CA glue, I'll keep it in place. So now that I took care of that, let's start thinking about the paint job. And for this project, I decided to try something different. So this is the primer that I use in my models uh, most of the time, this uh, medium gray that I like and uh, that I love. But the thing is that sometimes it is hard to find uh, this gray primer right here. So the other day I was looking for a primer and I couldn't find the, the medium gray that I like and I ended up buying this one right here which turned out to be too dark for the build process. That same week I ended up buying this one also which is a rusty red uh, that is also too dark for the job so I, I don't use it in the building process. But then I had this idea of using those two primers uh, to create a lazy chipping effect. So once the model is finished, I'll spray it with the dark gray uh, primer, as you guys can see. And on the top of it, I'll add some stains of the rusty red primer. In this close-up shot right here, you guys can see that the dark gray is like the base uh, primer and the rusty red is just to add some speckles and some color to it. And I guess some of you guys already got the idea. Uh, the idea is to chip the paint showing the primer behind it, creating this uh, lazy chipping effect. Quick pause right here because I'm actually making a huge mistake. So uh, this base is made out of MDF and this right here is kind of quote unquote the end grain of it. Now if you worked with MDF before you know that this thing absorbs a lot of moisture and that's a problem. That alone can really ruin this model in the future so I need to take care of that right now. So I know that the primer can kind of help uh, with the moisture, but to, to be 100% sure that this is not going to be a problem in the future, I'm kind of sealing it with some CA glue. So as you guys just saw, I, I put some CA glue on the end grain and I'm kind of spreading it with this uh, sanding paper and now I just sand the whole thing down, make it smooth and now I think I'm safe with it. Now finally start working on the colors of this project. Uh, 
and here's my idea uh, the combat robot is green and kind of dark so I need to make a at least a portion of the base uh, kind of in a lighter color and I'm thinking about using this uh, medium gray uh, for this part right here I'm also thinking about a cool color uh, for the foot pads, different colors for each one, uh, maybe. And for the center, for the central arm, I'm thinking about using this uh, orange right here. Now, the reason that I'm using this orange is that the combat robot is green, as I said before, and oranges and reds are kind of the opposite colors of green, so I'll create a nice contrast with it. And then I also mix that uh, lime yellow color that I think looks cool and will create even more uh, contrast in the base. As this diorama shows the service pay for huge combat robots, uh, let's just say that the paint job on those structures uh, will never be as perfect as we think. So I'll not worry too much about the masking right here, I'll just make a quick and dirty uh, masking process right here, because uh, lots of chipping and weathering effects will be applied uh, to this paint job. So I have the medium gray uh, applied to the sides of the base as you guys just saw and right here in the middle I feel like I need a darker uh, color so I'm hitting with this uh, dark gunmetal color just in the middle right here. So this is the result, I really like it and now I'm thinking about using the first accent color of this project uh, in the middle and also on the foot pads. So I grabbed this uh, yellow lime color right here that I really love and I'll try to, to make just a portion of this uh, central structure right here in this color. So again I made this quick and dirty masking and with some, some coats of uh, this lime yellow color I reached uh, this effect finishing right here. There is some paint uh, leaking right here in the center but this is no problem because uh, the central arm will actually hide it. To make things faster I'll heat it with this uh, hair dryer so that I can move on to the chipping process. And here's where the uh, lazy chipping effect that I was uh, trying to figure out uh, kind of works. So I'm rubbing uh, the sharp tool against the, the surface, against the paint job. And once the, the, the paint job is gone, I'm showing the dark primer underneath it. So yeah, I think this technique is working for me. I feel like if I was working with the uh, lighter uh, gray primer, uh, I, I would need to be much more careful with the chipping. And yeah, this is just the, the laziest uh, thing to make. Uh, but I feel like it works and I like the result so far. As most of the foot pad would be covered uh, with the foot of the robot, obviously, I'll just paint it with the brush. I'm not too worried about the, the finishing of this part, especially because I think that uh, as the robot kind of stomps on it uh, daily, uh, the paint job needs to be ruined and this is the look I was going for. As always, to break the symmetry, uh, in the other foot pad I will use this lighter gray uh, just to, to make it different. And onto it I'm also doing the chipping with the sharp tool uh, showing the primer behind it. And so far so good, I feel like this uh, lazy chipping is kind of working for me. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. And then I took care of this area right here in the back of the base and as I want this base to, to create a contrast with the robot I decided to throw this lighter gray right here. 
So again, just a quick and dirty masking uh, was good enough for this piece. Uh, most of this uh, ink will be chipped away and there's lots of weathering to go on top of it. So I'm not too worried about making the best uh, masking job possible. And then I did some chipping with a Q-tip and, and alcohol actually and as this one is directly on the top of the primer when I chip it it shows the, the red of the primer uh, right away so I really gotta be careful I don't wanna uh, remove too much paint right here so the Q-tip is gentle enough Now even though I've already painted this part right here in the back and also I did some chipping as you guys can see, I'll apply another coat of paint on the top of it uh, to make this uh, double layered chipping effect that you guys will see in a minute. So as you guys just saw, I did this uh, quick and dirty brush painting, I'm drying it with my hair dryer and now I have double layer uh, of paint and if I'm gentle enough with the Q-tip, I can first remove the first one and if I go one step ahead, I remove the, the second uh, coat of paint and I'll show the primer underneath it. This is kind of a double uh, layered uh, chipping effect that I really like to make. Right here I'm experimenting with a toothpick, uh, this is an interesting tip to give you guys and maybe try different tools to make the chipping, uh, the wood has a different hardness so yeah, maybe try that to get different results. I feel like the back of this piece which holds the four cables is kind of empty so I need to, to add some, uh, some, some graphics to that maybe. So right here I'm making this uh, type of arrow uh, just to, to signalize something to the robot maybe. So I began by making a black square, on the top of it with the masking tape I made this uh, quick and dirty arrow right here. Once that's set uh, I can finally chip it with the Q-tip uh, to be gentle with it. While I was making that, I've left my 3D printer working, uh, printing this stencil right here. So SB uh, stands for Service Bay 21 is the year we're in, and the K is the code for the combat unit. I'll attach it to the piece with some double-sided tape, and now with my airbrush, with the lowest uh, paint flow I can, uh, I'll paint it carefully, uh, trying to, to keep the airbrush uh, perpendicular to the stencil. That last uh, thing is important because most of the stencil is not covered uh, with the double sided tape so if you keep it uh, perpendicular to the stencil you have no leaking. So now I just take a quick step back and look what I have and I really like what I'm seeing. Now the red primer in the front kind of changes the perception but I'll tackle this uh, front portion on the next work day. I want to make this front portion with the same color of the back right here with this lighter gray. Let's see how this goes in the next day. So I did again the quick and dirty masking and I've painted it quickly with the lighter gray as I use in the back portion of the base. So now we finally have the base with at least the first coat of paint. Right here I'm adding some different shades of grey with a brush, uh, I did that right here in the back also, uh, as you guys can see, the result is subtle but it is there and I feel like it adds uh, some volume to the base. Again with that second coat of paint I can make the doubled uh, layer effect with a Q-tip. Without pausing the video, let me just ask you guys to please check the links in the description box, my Patreon and my Coffee account. So if you want to support this channel financially and if you want to help me keep going, please check that out. It really helps at this moment.
and off camera I did the same thing uh, with the brush I've added some different shades of grey to different pieces and parts of the base to this middle section right here I've added a darker grey and I did some chipping with the q-tip it kind of looks like I'm already making the washing process uh, but that's okay for me and right here in the back I did the double layer chipping as you guys can see and I really like it but if you look at the base as it is right now you may feel like this has too much contrast like in between the lime yellow and the grays and the orange and the black uh, this is not the case at all because once i apply the final coat of matte varnish every color would kind of do down so we really have to have that in mind when we're painting the models And I just showed you guys the orange central arm, so let me just show you guys how I made it and how I did the shipping on it as well. I began by applying this orange color right here, this glossy orange, it's almost the same orange as the uh, segment of the leg of the combat robot. And the same lazy chipping uh, effects uh, I've tried in this one right here. As you can see, the orange color is the first and only coat of paint in this, in this piece. And right now, I'm realizing that I should uh, maybe work this technique a little better. I'm thinking I should look for a black primer to make the, the chipping layer kind of darker and deeper. But yeah, I feel like I, I should perfect this technique, but so far so good. I'm really happy with how it turns out and how fast it can create some nice effects on the model. On this side right here, I decided to apply this uh, darker gray right here. And with it, I can make this double layered uh, chipping effect right here. And so again, I'm gently removing just the, uh, the gray coat. And if I go one step further, I will remove the, the orange one as well. So as you guys can see, I did the same thing to, to all of the segments of this uh, central arm support thing. And still I need to add some details to it, maybe some letters and some, some arrows maybe. Not to mention the wires that I'll add to this thing and at the end of the process I'll even add some tiny screws and nuts uh, to it. So yeah, lots of tiny details will be added to this uh, interesting piece that really needs to shine on the model. Now that we have all of the base colors in the project, we can finally add the uh, final coat of glossy varnish uh, to protect the whole thing uh, for the washing process. So I've added two coats of glossy varnish and I dried it quickly with the hair dryer. So as you guys can see, it is all shiny and ugly, but that's the idea right here. We need the, the glossy varnish to really protect uh, the paint underneath it. The ideal thing right here to do was to wait at least a day for the, for the glossy varnish to really set, but I don't have that time now, so I have to start the wash process right away. So as I always do, I'm making an oil wash, uh, so I grabbed some oil colors and I made it real, real thin. And I'm applying it with a brush, I'm trying to, to unevenly spread some color onto the model. And right after I do that, I, I start kind of cleaning it. And as this is an oil wash, the, the color really spreads throughout the model, so you really have to be careful right here. And if the oil wash is thin enough, as you guys can see, it kind of searches its way in the crevices of the model. So this is really interesting and it really adds depthness to, to the details of the model. Also, as you guys can see, I'm not kind of rubbing uh, the, the cloth on the model. The varnish is super fresh, so I have to be careful. So I just dab it on the surface as careful as I can, removing the, 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 the oil wash. And once I feel I have the precise amount of dirt in the model, I can apply the final coat of matte varnish. 
Now I, I want to be careful with the matte varnish because if I apply like more than two layers of it, it will really really do down the colors and I don't want that. I want to I want it to do just a little, not too much. So in this one I've applied just two coats of the matte varnish and I think it's enough. And so here's the base with the matte varnish and as I said in the middle of the video the, the contrast kind of goes down throughout the whole model as you guys can see. The black and the green middle is not screaming as it was anymore so yeah I'm happy with it. This is the result that I was looking for uh, when painting with the first color coats. This is still not the end of this project, but stick around because I have to tell you guys about uh, the secret Gribbly from last week. But before I do that though, let me just thank my Patreon and Coffee supporters. This channel is only possible because of the support of those amazing people and I cannot express how helpful uh, this has been uh, in the moment. So yeah, thank you guys so much for that. If you wanna join them, I have some links in the description box. Now let's go for the secret Gribbly from last week. So the black piece right there is the piece that holds the keys uh, from a very very old mechanical keyboard. And I took this one apart uh, more than five years ago I believe. But yeah guys, this is it for now and thank you so much if you watched this far. I'll catch you guys in the next one.